Hello, and welcome to Courageous Doctors, the new show for you and your doctor. Today, we will discuss Obamacare updates, other healthcare news, and health and safety tips. Before I begin, let me just say that this is the first new show since President-elect Trump uh, will be coming into office. As you know, there is talk uh, with the full congressional uh, Republicans having taken over that they may repeal Obamacare. So we'll keep you up to date month to month, but it looks like from early talks from Trump that he may keep parts of Obamacare. So stay in touch and we'll see how that works out. Now let's begin. Kaiser Health News says that 43% of returning consumers to the exchanges this year have to now switch companies due to many insurance companies dropping out of the exchanges. So even before President Trump takes office, Obamacare was already in trouble. The ledger says that premiums have increased now that many exchanges have only one insurance company on it. See the problem? Insurance companies drop out, our prices go up. In New Jersey, only the Blues and AmeriHealth remain. Health Republic left due to its financial collapse. The Wall Street Journal says that the average cost of employer-sponsored health care rose to $18,142 a year in 2016, and this is up from $17,545 in 2015. The Washington Post says that some businesses, small businesses, are facing a 38% increase in their premiums with $6,000 deductibles. Ouch, that hurts. The Washington Post says that the Census Bureau is reporting the uninsurance rate now to be 9.1%. Kaiser Health News says that the IRS says that insurance plans with higher deductibles pay for preventive care, but listen to this, not for illness or even medications until these very high deductibles are met. See, we're, we're in trouble. We, we have to do something about that. The Star-Ledger says that the New Jersey State Assembly is voting to protect consumers from getting billed from outside networks and not knowing where these bills are coming from. Now, the Star-Ledger has uh, good news in that East Orange General Hospital uh, has avoided bankruptcy and will continue to run. So that's some good news. Now let's move on to other healthcare news. The Washington Post says the Zika virus is spreading through body fluids, including tears. We now know that it persists in blood for up to 80 days. Think about transfusions and all. And of course, it's in the semen for six months, which is why men who were exposed were told to uh, be careful for six months. And, but it's also in vaginal fluid for two weeks. So even after it's in the body for a week, it's persisting in these sexual fluids. This just came in that there's a, a salmonella alert. CNN is reporting that salmonella has been contaminated from Four Seafoods Corporation, and that is in its grated Parmesan, Romano and imported Italian uh, Romano cheeses, and 4C Foods says that you can go to their site, uh, look for uh, the UPC codes on 4C Foods website. So it may not be all their food, so just check it out and see um, if your food is in there. The uh, Washington Post says that contaminated poultry with MRSA, which is resistant staph, has been coming over from Europe. So. Please be careful and, and look at the CDC news and, and see which poultry has been in, uh, infected. The CDC says, and this is a, a little scary, uh, we all take kids to, to zoos and all. Uh, apparently petting zoos and state fairs, um, the pigs have a new strain of swine flu that we have not seen before and these kids are getting sick. So the CDC said, wash your hands uh, after petting these animals you know, or, or before eating, and they have a time limit. The, these animals should not be there for more than 48 hours to try to prevent uh, any swine flu they have from being passed along. 
The New Jersey Department of Health says there is an increase in reported polio-like paralysis. This is very scary. I actually had a patient a couple years ago with this. These viruses are from the intestine, uh, like our summer flus, the enteroviruses. Although they haven't found the exact virus, we think that because polio belongs to that family, they can sometimes react in a similar way. And um, these reports are increasing in many different states, so uh, we have to be careful. These are, of course, summertime flus, so you probably won't see it much throughout the year. But if you have a child and you think it's a flu and they start, you know, being paralyzed, uh, you got to get them in the hospital right away. Washington Post, and this is also alarming, I did not know this, says that a Vibrio bacteria found in the Maryland waters um, in, in, uh, has actually killed a man who was cleaning his crabs uh, in polluted water and crabs from this water, and he cut himself, and that cut got infected and poisoned his blood and killed him in a couple of days. Usually people that get these vibrio illnesses just get bad diarrhea. So apparently, um, I, I guess the state, Maryland State Department of Health has taken care of this, but uh, you have to really be careful uh, with uh, contaminated water, and these bacteria are getting stronger. Let's see. Um, the CNN has reported that Maine has recalled mussels and clams. Get a load of this. Poisoned by algae. So even algae, oh boy, it's terrifying, uh, can, can kill you if you uh, eat food that is contaminated with it. And the algae cannot be killed by freezing or cooking. Terrifying. Okay, uh, eggs from the Good Earth egg company have caused salmonella infection in the Midwest. So again, if you're using that company, check and be sure that it's all been recalled. Uh, salmonella has also come out from a Costco chicken salad in, in Washington. So again, just check everything. Uh, you know, uh, CDC says that one out of six of us are being poisoned every day. Um, and um, you, you just don't know where. This is a big reason why on a previous news show, uh, this station backed the, um, the ability, uh, hoping states would, would pass a, a sick leave uh, uh, law. And I had actually gone on TV with the assembly uh, who was proposing this in, in the state assembly because uh, people cooking our foods um, are afraid uh, they'll lose their jobs and they come in sick and cook our foods and that's another way of getting sick. So, you know, paid sick leave should be an absolute must and this is a perfect example of we're all getting food poison. Uh, let's see, CNN reports, oh boy, back to Flint, Michigan. Remember the problems with the lead in the waters? Oh boy, um, now, now they have Shigella, Shigella outbreaks in those waters. Those people can't win. Uh, this is an interesting point. Flu shots, uh, as you know, the, the young, our youth, the millennials, uh, they don't like flu shots. But somebody did a study on this and found out why. Well, half of them think it's just not going to work. And a quarter of them said they can't afford it. So that's a new twist. Uh, I guess we have to do a better job promoting flu shots. The Washington Post says that, um, oh, this is good. Uh, you know, we're always trying to find vaccines and different immune ways to fight cancer, and that's the whole big thing. Remember, we reported on a previous show about, President, about Vice President Biden's wonderful work to try to uh, get rid of cancer and mobilize a, a whole force and a billion dollars being put towards that by President Obama and the White House. And now they're coming up with vaccines against cancer, and a Cuban uh, lung cancer vaccine is now in trials. So that, that's terrific. For, for all of you who've had personal contacts and family members that died of lung cancer, uh, this is just wonderful news. Um, the rates of sexually transmitted diseases are increasing, especially chlamydia. You know, the Academy of Pediatrics says that any youth should really be tested for chlamydia. That can be tested in the urine now. Gonorrhea and chlamydia can be tested routinely with a urine result, so it's not painful. And that's something that we all have to ask our doctors about. The New York Times says that the World Health Organization is now declaring the Americas free of measles and any new cases are coming from overseas. You remember we reported extensively uh, last year about the measles uh, outbreaks that were going on. Uh, in Jersey, I think we had one case. In previous years, we've had one or two. 
uh, and a big fight to try to get everyone immunized against measles. Uh, apparently, these are coming from overseas because World Health says that we don't have any uh, cases coming from, uh, you know, fresh from this country. So that was news to me. I didn't realize that. Star Ledger says uh, that nurses at the University Hospital in Newark, uh, it's voluntary. They do not, by contract, have to um, get training for Ebola virus and training for how to protect yourself. You remember uh, we had one nurse uh, that was actually put in isolation in a special hospitalized tent uh, for Ebola virus contact. And uh, that was a big outcry. And I think there's a lawsuit ongoing. Um, a lot of the nurses around the country, remember Texas was where it was mainly affected, uh, said they were not properly trained. And it was how they took off their clothing after they were with an Ebola patient and they uh, could have caught Ebola. So now, uh, apparently, the nurses don't have to do it. Uh, if you remember last year, Governor, um, Governor Christie set up special regionalized places that would handle these patients so the rest of us don't have to uh, shut down our offices uh, and get contaminated from Ebola. So uh, let's see. The Washington Post says that 20% of adults have mental health problems. This is similar to children. But only half are getting treated. Only half are getting treated. So where do they go? They fill up the emergency rooms. They have no beds to go to. The governor cut out beds. There's no money being put in. If you remember, we reported, I believe last news show, that the grant uh, coming in from the government to uh, give more money for mental health services wasn't really for treating them in outpatient clinics or setting up beds. It was just for evaluation and PR stuff. So again, who's spending this money? Where is it going? Our emergency rooms are overloaded. And a lot of it's from these mental health problems. Somebody's got to figure out a better way. I mean, that's just terrible. If you've been in the emergency rooms or if you have family that have been there for mental illness, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just not fair. There should be better ways to move these patients around. Let's see. Um, the Washington Post said that there's a World Conservative Congress now discussing about genes to wipe out species. Remember that we reported on previous news shows about, I forget, it may have been England. I forget where, or I'm not sure where it came out of, but there was a, a gene company that was going to insert genes into mosquitoes in Brazil so that these mosquitoes could no longer have baby mosquitoes and that way they wouldn't carry Zika virus. Well, now this apparently goes along with other diseases. And of course, there's always the factor of uh, genetic manipulation and how will it affect us. But this is interesting. Listen to this. It's not just for Zika. Um, mosquitoes um, that carry malaria can be found, uh, you know, genes that uh, uh, are found in birds, um, uh, even, gene, even manipulating genes to kill off rats and mice on islands. So uh, there's a World Congress looking into what they want to do with this. Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years, and we are thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists, and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. Reuters says that the FDA has placed a warning on drugs treating low testosterone. You know, this is the fad now. Uh, a lot of men, as they get older, myself included, I'm getting older, I should probably test myself. Men are tired and weak and just have low testosterone. So they buy these over the counter or even prescription, um, you know, topical treatments. But now they're finding that some of these really have uh, very bad effects uh, 
heart disease, strokes, depression, liver failure. So you should really check with your doctor if there's side effects to the testosterone medicine that you're using. JAMA, the Journal for uh, the American Medical Association, reported on a world panel that's now studying nerve toxins found in many different chemicals, especially the effect on pregnant women and children. And there was a law recently uh, passed in Congress in June, uh, an amendment to the Toxic Substance Control Act that specifically is looking for the effects of all these chemicals on pregnant women and children. And these are things we've talked about in the past. You know, your heavy metals, lead and mercury, pesticides, phthalates, that stuff in the plastic bottles that we all drink that probably have, are not good for us, but we all do it. Um, and other things and uh, stuff we find that are, are being put into a lot of the common products that we use every day. Who knows, some of this may be poisoning ourselves. So these studies are, are really good, and I'm glad there's a World Congress now looking at this. Bloomberg News says that the FDA has placed a warning on homeopathic teething remedies. Look out for all those people with their three- and four-month-old babies up to those two-year molars. Um, I did not know this. These babies have seizures, shortness of breath, vomiting, and 10 have actually died. I, as a pediatrician, I'm ashamed to say I didn't even know this. You know, people come in and they use their homeopathic remedies, but I did not know they caused problems. Star Ledger said that, and this is, uh, this is terrible, that although we do a very good job with school breakfast and giving lunch to poor people and all, because we don't want kids coming to school hungry, and we have a, there's a silent problem of a lot of people that are poor and, and really are not eating well, and they, you may not see it on the surface, but teachers know it because these kids are hungry. Well, we, we help a lot, but apparently thousands were denied in New Jersey that were actually qualified. So even though we help maybe hundreds of thousands, there's thousands still denied. We've got to do a better job there. The ledger says that Narcan is saving lives. You know, Narcan is that drug you inject if you have a heroin overdose. And now the police, there was a recent law, the police are now carrying it, other people are carrying it, it's saving lives. So it's, it's good to see that it's out there because uh, the heroin epidemic, remember it got a big press release with the, um, the presidential campaign and the primaries. As the, uh, as the politicians went state to state, they were reporting on the huge silent uh, you know, crisis of middle class kids, not just ghetto, middle class, high class, elite, whatever. These kids are being hooked on heroin and now uh, we're beginning to see. So this just, I, I think the reason why I mentioned it was to bring out that we really need to stay focused. Congress is passing legislation on cutting down on pain meds. I know in my own practice, uh, I send people to special hospital pain management clinics. We don't do that as doctors anymore ourselves. Uh, we don't prescribe pain medicines because you really need specialists uh, who are trained in pain medicine to really handle this because people get addicted. Let's see, USA Today said that J&J &J is now warning that insulin pumps, oh my God, listen to this, insulin pumps can be hacked. You know, they're computerized. Can you imagine wearing an insulin pump and then some jerk somewhere around the world hacks in and kills you with too much insulin? I mean, my God, I mean, there's got to be ways to protect us. This is unbelievable. I, I can't even imagine this. Bad enough you have diabetes, you finally get a pump, because when you inject insulin, it doesn't work as well as the pump. The pump keeps a more steady level, and now you've got to be afraid of it being hacked. Jane uh, j, &J says you can disconnect yourself to the Internet and all, but I guess there's ways to do it. But, I mean, somebody's got to be smart enough to keep our computers and our technology as it advances safe from all these creeps hacking into us. I don't know if they're countries or just creepy nerds or what they are, but I mean, I, this is just unbelievable. Uh, let's see. Bloomberg News says that the Myelin Company, uh, we've reported on this before, they make EpiPen, and you know, they drastically increase their prices from $100 to $600. And this is life-saving medicine. If your insurance covers it, it doesn't matter. They were going to, uh, because of congressional uh, hearings, they were going to cut that price to $300 for two EpiPens. You always have to have two in case one doesn't work. You know, if you, have a, uh, if you take a nut and you're allergic to it, you need to inject that so you don't die um, or something else you're allergic to. And um, 
so the congressional hearings have been uh, forcing them to do this. And there was a lot of things that went into it. Remember, we reported on this the last news show in terms of why the costs went up and who's involved in the production and trying to get uh, competition from other genetic companies. If you remember, the FDA said they don't have enough people to try to get these generic drugs out. They're overwhelmed. So, And the company itself said, for whatever reason, they're going to be delayed in getting out the half-priced cost of the drug. Um, uh, probably till after after New Year's, hopefully by then. So, um, and I, I believe that if you have Medicaid or if your insurance covers it, you're okay. So, but for all of you that will need to be buying this EpiPen, probably at the beginning of each school year, hopefully uh, it won't cost as much. Let's see. Um, oh, this is interesting. Th this is very important. Um, this is a philosophy on what is going on that we should all think about. It's part of this myelin thing. If you're a private consumer and you have a high deductible, which was the problem that we're seeing with the Obamacare uh, changes, and hopefully President Trump can address this, um, you'd have to pay if, if you didn't have that $300 discount, you'd have to pay the 600. But get a load of this, companies um, like insurance companies uh, and other people that are not the individual patient, they get the drug for a lot cheaper because Myelin was giving them kickbacks to give them a lot cheaper. Uh, this is uh, all from the same, uh, same news story. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if they, why would they give it cheaper to an insurance company that won't pay for it because you have a high deductible but the insurance company can then sell, can then pay a cheaper price to somebody that they are covering. Somebody explain this to me, please. All right, uh, let's see. New York Times, um, and I'll conclude with this, says that, this is interesting, that the sugar industry, this is a big article, um, it was reported in JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, back in the 60s or so, uh, they had actually paid off Harvard scientists, get a load of this, to say, that sugar's not the problem, fat is the problem. So what happens? We all go on low-fat diets. Um, we all go on cholesterol-lowering drugs, which may be good anyway. I'm on it. Um, but the idea that we were saying it was the fat, not the sugar. Now, of course, we all know it's the sugar. And um, so it was actually false advertising uh, from these scientists and from these companies that made us not look at sugar earlier on. And, and I just think that's terrible. Um, let me leave you with uh, some tips on decreasing sugar uh, that were mentioned in this article. One is um, avoid soda, sweet tea, lemonade, and energy drinks. Uh, instead, add maple syrup. Uh, to oatmeal, add honey to berries and plain yogurt, and add cinnamon to slice apples and pears. That sounds good for Thanksgiving. I'll add one just last note that I forgot to say. Um, uh, the Academy of Pediatrics has now come out and said uh, uh, that they really don't want uh, little children in front of a TV, and even if you're over two years old, no more than, than one hour. So... With that, I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, think about those cinnamon and sliced apples and pears and turkey and cranberry and all the good stuff. Have a low sugar but fun Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll see you. We look forward, as always, to hearing from you, and we'll see you again next month.